My name is Josh Morton, Vice President, IT Enterprise Services at Sprint. I have general oversight for all the computing infrastructure for the company, everything from the data centers and what runs in the data centers all the way out to the desktop and everything in between. Sprint's one of the largest telecommunications providers in the nation. We currently service over 54 million wireless and wireline customers and businesses. We're all also a global internet access carrier. As a business, we have three primary goals that we're uh, dead set on. One, to strengthen and grow our brand. Secondly, to generate cash to support future growth of our business, and third, to provide excellent customer experience and satisfaction. From a data center point of view, we operate out of four data centers, two primary, two secondary data centers. We have about 6,000 physical hosts. About 70% of the guests that run on those hosts are run virtually, and we also have a 30 petabyte SAN environment. About five years ago, we saw the need to address the increased cost of storage in our environment, which was really being driven by the explosive growth in data as a telecommunications company. Economically, it made a lot of sense to us. We knew we'd get financial benefit of driving up storage utilization. At the same time, we wanted to improve the manageability of the environments. So we built out a very highly virtualized SAN architecture and migrated to it. And sure enough, we, got, we had phenomenal gains out of doing that, our, our storage utilization went from a little over 30% to well over 80%. And in doing so, we avoided a lot of costs associated with raw storage growth. But at the same time, it came with some challenges and it became increasingly difficult to manage sort of the performance expectations uh, in that uh, multi-tenant, very dense uh, environment. So given the performance challenges we were having in the environment, we decided to bring in virtual instruments and we installed it in two of our uh, clusters and uh, end to end the turn up only took about two weeks and within an hour of, of turning it up we started to see sand flow problems that we've never been able to isolate before. Specifically we found a buffer to buffer credit starvation issue that had impact in our dot com environment. So with uh, the early successes there we decided to deploy virtual wisdom to the rest of our storage environment. Like the early deployments, installation was a snap, took a matter of weeks and was non-disruptive to ongoing uh, operations. Well, now that we had uh, virtual wisdom installed across our entire storage environment, we got real-time performance monitoring and insights into our entire environment, which let us uh, identify and isolate and resolve performance issues often before our application customers even knew they were occurring. Uh, also, the, uh, the really great graphical user interfaces that virtual wisdom gives us and the, and the visual representation of the data gives us a, a, a quite intuitive ability to do fault detection and correlation that we never had before. With virtual wisdom in our environment, we were able to, to tune and optimize overall SAN performance and, and actually increase or improve IO response time by 50% across the board. In one case, we had a, a VMware environment that had been having chronic performance problems. And with virtual uh, uh, wisdom, we were able to identify and isolate that problem and improve response time by over 90%. So with virtual wisdom, we've been able to see cost benefits really in three areas primarily. Uh, first, uh, in terms of optimizing storage balancing, meaning, meaning where we put storage secondary. Uh, tertiary or primary storage and, and essentially we've been able to put storage in the most economical place while still ensuring that the application is getting the performance uh, that they require. Secondly, we've been able to manage uh, and, and, and actually increase storage utilization in our environments to continue to get those kinds of benefits associated with high storage utilization. And then in, thirdly, we've been able to eliminate other higher price tools that only gave us limited insight in, into our environments and get rid of those by virtue of, of the totality of the insights that virtual wisdom gives us in our environments. Conventional wisdom would say you, you can't have your cake and eat it too, meaning you, you can't have both ultra high storage utilization and, uh, and at the same time provide your, your multi-tenants the, the kind of performance guarantees that they're looking for. With virtual wisdom, we found, in fact, you can do that, and, and we've seen both the economic gains, we've seen the manageability improvements in our environment, and, and we've been able to uh, achieve the high utilization and the performance expectations that our customers are looking for. Um, that puts us in a position where we can manage very dense, uh, multi-tenant computing environments and, and to get all the benefits out of that, but at the same time provide the uh, performance assurances that our customers need. I sleep better at night knowing I have all the data that I need at, at our fingertips to be able to isolate, pinpoint, and resolve problems, usually before our customers even know about it.
Based on our experience with virtual wisdom, we, we've seen phenomenal uh, gains within Sprint. When we look at what's available in the marketplace, we, we really don't see much comparable product out there that can do the same kind of stuff. When we see what's coming with Virtual Wisdom 4, it looks like uh, BI is making uh, huge gains and advances in the capabilities. We're looking forward to bringing those into our environment, including the enhanced uh, metrics, the advanced analytics, and an even better uh, user interface. And, and all these capabilities continue to support our ability to manage very robust, highly reliable, secure environments that allow us to scale uh, to meet the needs of our business, which is expecting us to be better, faster, and cheaper.